Welcome back to the Institute of East Asia training, our uh, class on biblical counseling. This is uh, our 32nd period, and uh, today I should be on the 33rd, so I'm so far behind. Anyway, uh, this is the period we're going to do our cooperative learning. But first, I'll pray for you, and we'll have a five-point quiz, or maybe six, five, and then we'll talk about what you're going to be talking about now and then, what you're going to be talking to yourself about. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, I ask that you'll bless us as we try to prepare to help others. I ask for that gift in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Uh, question one. How is true guilt different from false guilt? The guilt that God tries to give from the guilt that Satan tries to give. What's the difference between them? Question one. Question two is related. I should give you some time for that first question. Question two is, how do we resolve true guilt? What is our part? I'm looking for two things that we need to do. One related to God and one uh, anyway. What two things do we need to do to resolve true guilt? And the third thing is, how do we resolve false guilt? And uh, these two questions, you're gonna, we're, we're going to be talking about them today. So even if you don't get them right, you, know, you will learn something about it even in this cooperative learning period. Question four. Why is it that man-pleasing is a spiritual problem in Galatians 1? Galatians 1 says if we're pleasing man, we shouldn't be a, a servant of God. Why is that? What's wrong with man-pleasing? And question five. When shame is rejected wrongly, when it says in that one passage that their God is their belly, what does that mean? What does it mean to have, have their belly be a God and to have their glory be their shame? So that's the question. Those are the five questions. And now for your discussion with those around you, you're going to take up the rest of the period discussing these things. The first is, how would you help a man who had been involved in war and had uh, killed persons in the war, and now decades later, he's just full of guilt and shame about having done that? So here's something he did that uh, fills him with shame. How, how would you help him? And a second question, quite different. Many women who have been raped feel as if they feel ashamed of it, especially if it happened when they were young, even when they were adults, but young. How would you help a woman, if you were a woman, maybe a man if you were a man, who felt shame about having, because he or she was a victim of rape? What would you suggest or do to help someone who felt shameful about that? And then the third one is, uh, how would you help someone who was living in a deep shame because his alcohol addiction causes him to just waste all of his family's money so that they are living in rags and having improper food and struggling to get along because from payday he just goes and he binges out and then when he's sober he's just terribly ashamed of his terrible behavior. What would you have to say to that man? So these are three categories of shame really quite different from each other. Talk it through what you would do to try to help these people to become confident again, confident in front of men, confident in front of God. That's what we're aiming for. Or with guilt to, to be able to face God and to have confidence with him. All right, I'm going to pray with you and then leave you those 40-some uh, minutes to talk. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, I'm asking that you would give us skills as we're learning this business of biblical counseling, that you would teach us how to help persons who are struggling. I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.